In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this awesome text animation inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects, we first just want to begin by creating the box animation and then we can put the text inside the box. So in order to create that box, we first just want to go into the proportional grid. So we'll select this icon here, go down to proportional grid, and that would turn on this grid. And this is just going to help us with framing. Now we'll go up to this rectangle tool up here. And then you just want to go across to fill and stroke. And then you want to press on the word fill, not the color. So not this box, you want to press the word and then make sure you select no fill. Then you want to move across and select stroke. And then you want to make sure that this second option is selected and that is solid color. We'll press OK on that. And then you can change the color of this if you like, but we're going to add a gradient to this later on. So don't worry about this step for now. Then you can just go ahead and increase the stroke width if you wanted to, which is just the thickness of the line. But I'm just going to leave this at around 10 for now. And then I'm just going to draw a box in the middle of our composition. There we go. So now if we turn the proportional grid off, you can see we've got this box in the middle of our composition. Now at the moment, those lines aren't exactly the thickest. So I'm just going to go out to stroke duration and increase that up to around here. Now we can really see that box. So the next step is to go ahead and get our big word. So in this example, I'm going to go for the word Brooker. And in order to create that, we first just want to go up to the title icon, to the horizontal type tool. We'll select within the box and just type out your word of choice. And then you want to go to the character window on the right of After Effects. And if you can't see the character window for any reason, by the way, then just go into window, scroll down to character and make sure that it is ticked. So make sure it's enabled. Then from there, we can go ahead and increase the font size. We can change the font. We can change the weight of the font. But I'm going to keep this as a really bold font here. Of course, feel free to turn the proportional grid back on to get this properly framed up in the center. And make sure this really fills this box. So make sure that it's almost touching those edges like this. There you go. Now, if we turn that proportional grid off, you can see that is looking good. But the problem is it's actually probably a little bit too tall. So we can just go ahead and we can just pull this down a little bit like this. And we can also make it a little bit wider as well. So there you go. You can see we've got our word and we've got our box created. Now we want to go ahead and create the space for the smaller word. So in order to do that, you just want to select that text layer. We'll go back into the rectangle tool. Feel free to turn the proportional grid on if it helps, but it might not do. We'll zoom in and then you just want to go ahead and draw a rectangle in the middle of that text. So something like this. Then you want to go down into the mask. So if this doesn't appear, then just go into the drop down arrow, masks, mask one and you'll see the inverted box. Just select that box like this. And now when we zoom back out, you can see we've got this missing box where the other word can now live. Of course, if you wanted to, you could span this across the entire word like this. Or alternatively, you can just keep it to that box in the center. I'm just gonna keep it like this for now. So the next step is to go ahead and create another text there that will live in the middle of here. So just go back up to the T icon and type out your second word. And then again, you want to select all of that. We'll go into the character window and you just want to scale this down so that it will now fit in that box. So again, feel free to turn the proportional grid back on, center this back up, and then you can increase the size of the font. You can also add some kerning or some spacing between the letters by pulling this VA slider so that you can have this nice and wide like this. There we go. That looks really cool. And of course, feel free to change the color as well. So you can actually change this from a white to maybe a nice yellow orange color somewhere around here. And now if we zoom out, you can see that looks really cool. Now, before we carry on with the video, I first just want to take a very quick break to talk about some text animation presets that you can get from Sunduck Film. As you can see, I'm in the 100 titles pack and you can see this is the title animation that we are creating in this tutorial. And of course, if you scroll through the rest of this pack, then you can see there are loads of amazing text animation presets that you can just drag and drop into your composition. So all we need to do to get this into After Effects is just press the apply button. That will drop that into Adobe After Effects for us. And as you can see, that's now in our After Effects composition. There's no animation, no Bezier or Easy Ease keyframes, 
nothing complicated you just select the one that you want and press apply so if you're trying to create some really awesome seamless title animations inside of adobe after effects and you don't have the time or the effort or the energy to create these by hand then just go ahead and check out the sondup film titles pack the link is in the description below now back to the video of course at the moment though all we have is just this static image we may as well have just done this in photoshop so to really bring this to life we're going to add some animation to this now we want the box to animate on then we want the word to push in and then we want the second smaller word to appear in that box as well so let's just start with this box so we'll go down to the shape layer one we'll go into the contents and you can see you've got this add button here so we'll press the add and the triangle then you want to select trim paths and we'll go into trim paths and you can see we've got start end and offset we're just going to pull the end down to zero percent we'll go to the beginning of this animation create a brand new keyframe on the end by selecting that stopwatch icon and we'll go two seconds to the right and we'll pull this up to 100. let's play this back see how this looks there we go that looks good although the problem is the animation at the moment isn't exactly very stylized it just goes from the start point to the end point there's no flavor so we're going to convert these keyframes into easy ease so we'll highlight them both right click one of them or we'll select keyframe assistant and select easy ease and now you'll see that is a much nicer animation you can see it sort of accelerates into it and then slowly comes back into that end position. It's really nice and looks a lot nicer than the previous Bezier keyframes. So now the box is animating in, we can move on to the word. So we're just gonna select that Brooker layer. So this layer here, we're just gonna move across to maybe the three second mark and we'll go into mask path, create a brand new keyframe on mask path. Then we'll go to transform and we'll create a brand new keyframe on position. Then we'll come back on ourselves a little bit. So maybe go half a second to the left and we'll just move the position outside of the box. So out here. There we go. And now when we play this back, you can see this animates in. Although the problem is at the moment, this just animates in. We can see it waiting to come in. So we want to animate this so that it appears from behind that box. And in order to do that, we need to go ahead and create another mask. So we're just going to go ahead and select that text layer. We'll go to the rectangle tool and we'll just draw another rectangle around this box. Then you just want to go into mask two and make sure a new keyframe is created on the mask path. Then we'll go back to that first keyframe and we'll move that new mask over to the left like this. There we go. And then just scrub through the motion. Make sure that box is sitting there. It is sitting there, but at the moment you can see nothing is happening. And that's because we've got two masks now conflicting with each other. So if we go ahead and change this from add to lighten, for example, let's see how this looks. Nothing changes, but if we go to darken, you can see that now is starting to do what it needs to do. But the problem is we can still see it waiting here. So we're just going to cut the start of this text layer to here. Now, when we play this back, that animates in as we want it to. And of course, feel free to turn these keyframes into easy ease keyframes again. So let's see how that looks. That looks good, but we did see it flash for a brief moment though. So we're just going to cut this one more frame over. And there we go, that looks really cool. Now we're gonna move ahead to this first mask, this smaller mask, and we're gonna have this non-existent to begin with and then animate up to make this text appear. So we'll go into mask one, make sure a new keyframe has been created on mask one. And if not, then just select that stopwatch icon. Then we'll just move over, create another brand new keyframe, move over one more time and another new keyframe. Then we'll go back to that second keyframe and we're just going to expand the top two points up. There we go, like this. Then we'll just pull those bottom two points down. So we're basically expanding this mask up and down and then we'll go to that first keyframe and we'll just pull this into the middle. Feel free to turn the proportional grid back on by the way to help you line this up. So these points are going back to the middle like this. And if we turn off the films layer, let's just see how this looks. And we'll turn off the proportional grid. You can see we've still got that line there, unfortunately. So just before this first keyframe comes in, we're just going to go over to the right a little bit. We'll go onto mask expansion and create a brand new keyframe on the mask expansion. Then we'll go over to the left, maybe four keyframes or four frames. And we'll just pull this down to a negative number. 
So negative nine in my example gets rid of that. And there we go, that looks really cool. Of course, if you wanted to change the speed of this animation, then just increase or decrease the gap between those keyframes. As you can see, increasing has slowed that down, but if I was to decrease, that would speed that back up again. And of course, convert these keyframes into easy ease keyframes as well. There we go. So let's see what we've got so far with the box and the word. So the box comes in, the word comes in, the mask animates up, and now we can move on to that text. So that final text. So as this comes in, we're just going to turn that films layer back on. We'll go into the drop down arrow, transform, and we'll create a branded keyframe on scale at 100. Then we'll go to the left, maybe four frames, increase the scale. Then we'll come back on ourselves again, maybe four or five frames and pull that scale down to zero. Now, when we play this back, you can see that animates into place. And of course, if you wanted that to scale in at the same time that that mask animates, then feel free to move those keyframes over to the left and that will create this effect. Again, we're going to convert these keyframes into easy ease keyframes just to smooth out that motion. There we go. Now we want this final keyframe to marry up with the final keyframe on the mask. So I'm just going to move that over and let's see how that now looks. That looks really nice. So all you have to do at this moment in time is just close down all your layers, highlight all of those and select the motion blur icon. And if you're not seeing this by the way, then just select toggle switches slash modes to reveal this motion blur and then make sure the motion blur icon is set to blue because that will enable the motion blur. And then of course you can just put all of this into its own pre-composition. So we'll right click, pre-compose and we'll call this title animation. And now you've got the option to affect the scale, the position, the rotation of all of these. And we can move this wherever we want this to go. So we can put this in the bottom right corner if we wanted and decrease it so we can treat it as a lower third. Or we can have that large in the center of the frame. It's completely up to you but I'm going to put this back in the middle. We'll render this out and we'll just play this back so we can see what we've done. There you go. That looks really cool. So now that we've nested this, we've got it in its own pre-composition. If we wanted to animate this out, then we can just go into the scale, create a brand new keyframe on the scale, move over and we'll pull this down to zero. And that will now just scale out. So that will animate out at the end like this. And of course you can activate the motion blur on this pre-comp so that will add that motion blur to that out as well. So you've got this animating in and then it animates out like this. And of course feel free to convert those keyframes to easy ease keyframes again to get that nice animation style. But there you go, that is how you complete this text animation inside of Adobe After Effects. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next one. See you there.